Hello everyone again. We're going to talk about the surface area of prisms again. If you remember last time we talked, we were talking about triangular prisms and we said that the air, uh, surface area of it was two times the base plus the lateral area. And what we meant by that, let's say we have a triangular prism, okay? It goes something like that. Then we take the area of the base, whatever that is, big B stands for base area. We multiply it by two because there are two bases, right? And then whatever the lateral area is, which is the sum of the areas of the th three rectangles that connect the two bases, right? This is our lateral area, so plus lateral area. And if you remember, to find the base, that was, since this is the triangle, that's one half base times height, right? So this would be two times one half base, uh, base times height, little b, plus, okay, then the lateral area is the perimeter of the triangle times the big H height, which is the distance between the two bases. Remember, this was our way of finding the area of a triangular prism, surface area of a triangular prism. Okay, But it all comes down to this formula, 2B, 2B, two times the base, plus the lateral area. Well, what we want to talk about today is what if it's not a triangular prism, right? But it's some other kind of prism. Let's say instead of having triangular bases, it has rectangular bases. Okay, prism looks something like this. Okay. Now we need to find out what the area, we use the exact same formula, okay? But we have a different kind of base. So instead of using one half BH for a triangular base, we're gonna use uh, length times width for this rectangular base. So, and then this over here is still gonna be the height, right? Length times width or length, width, and height, okay? So we, for B, the area of the base, that's just length times width, right? It's just a rectangle. So two times length times width is 2B. If I plug in LW for B, I get two times LW for 2B. Now then, the lateral area, we want the perimeter times the height, remember? This is equal to two times the perimeter times the height. Well, what is the perimeter of this rectangle? Wouldn't that be L plus W plus L, these two are equal, and then these two are equal. So it would be L plus W plus L, plus W, right? In other words, 2L plus 2W. Okay, that's our perimeter. So 2L plus 2W, and then multiply that by the height. Two times the perimeter times the height. Oh, that's not, we shouldn't be two there. It's just perimeter times height, my bad. Okay. So now let's distribute this H and we get 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. And here is a formula for the area of a rectangular prism, the surface area of a rectangular prism. 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. Notice we have three different combinations of length, width, and height, right? LW, LH, WH, and we multiply each of them by two. 
Okay, that's how we find the surface area of a rectangular prism. What if they give us some other odd shaped base though? What about a, say they give us a trapezoid, trapezoidal prism. Okay. Something like that. And they told us that uh, this height equals 10, this base, um, I don't care, six, this base up here, base two, four, the height of the trapezoid is two. Notice the difference between this height and that height, right? And then they also, just for good measure, toss in that this is three and this is five. Okay, this distance, this distance, this side of the trapezoid. Well, again, our formula is 2B plus um, the lateral area. So first, let's calculate the size or the area of this base. Remembering our formula for the area of a trapezoid, the area of the base or the area of a trapezoid was one half base one plus base two times the height of the trapezoid. We fill in these values, one half, base one is six, Base two is four, and the height of the trapezoid is two. Well, one half times two, those two cancel each other out, don't they? And we wind up with the area of the base is 10. So 2B is two times 10, or 20 plus the lateral area. Now we have to find out what the lateral area is, right? Well, to find that out, we need to multiply the perimeter times the height. We know the height is 10. What would the perimeter of the base be? Well, to find it, we just add all of the sides of the trapezoid. Six plus four is 10. Five plus three is eight. 10 plus eight is 18. So the perimeter equals 18. The height is 10, that means perimeter times height is 180. Oops, one, it's 18 times 10 or 180, okay? So this is our lateral area. We can sub the, substitute that in right there. We get 20 plus the lateral area is 180, 20 plus 180. 200. 200 is the surface area of that trapezoidal pyramid, uh, prism, sorry. Okay. Let's talk about one more. Let's say this time they gave us a, a pentagon. And they told us that this is a regular pentagon. Since it's a prism, we have two bases, right? And they tell us that the area of the Pentagon is 15. And they told us, and I don't know if this is correct, but they also told us that this side of that Pentagon was three, okay? And they told us that the height of the prism is 10. Once again, our formula is 2B plus LA, okay? First, let's find the area of the base. Oh, they gave us the area of the base. The area is 15, so we multiply that by two and we get 30. 
Now we need the lateral area. Remember that the lateral area is perimeter times height. What is the perimeter of a pentagon, regular pentagon, with side three? Well, a regular pentagon, like any regular figure, all the sides are the same. It's a pentagon, so there are five sides. So I would just take the length of one side, multiply it by the number of sides, and I get that the perimeter is 15, right? Three times five. And then the height is 10, so perimeter times height is 15 times 10, or 150. I add these two numbers together for the total surface area of the prism. 150 plus 30 is 180. Okay? In this case, they gave us the area of the prism, or the, the base, right off the bat. If they had given us a Pothman perimeter here, we could have calculated the base for ourselves, but we didn't need to, they just gave it to us. All right, that's it, there should be an assignment. There is an assignment out there for you on the surface area of more general prisms. Give it a try, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.